Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. This is the Galaxy S23 FE, a new Samsung phone which offers high-end features borrowed from the top S series flagships. But depending on the market, you could get the S23 FE with a Snapdragon or an Exynos chipset. So is the Exynos version on par with the Snapdragon version, or does it fall short in any important way? Let's put the two head to head and find out. To get these two phones side by side, you'd have to travel the continents of the world, or make use of international shipping. At least we've done the hard work for you. So the Galaxy S23 FE. It's cheaper than the higher tier Samsung flagships, but still provides many similar features. Different regions get a version with a different chipset, which could affect the gaming and camera performance as well as the battery life. So we wanted to check that out. In the North American market, the phone comes with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And in other markets internationally, the S23 FE comes with an Exynos 2200 chipset. Both of these were cutting edge back in 2022, but they're a bit outdated now. Still, these chipsets provide good performance that is better than what you'd get in most mid-rangers. Comparing the benchmark scores between the Exynos S23 FE and the Snapdragon one, they're about neck and neck. The Snapdragon model has about a 5% higher score in GPU tasks, but that's not enough to make a noticeable difference. Regardless of the chipset though, the S23 FE isn't perfect for gaming. It has poor thermal management and demonstrated heavy thermal throttling in our stress tests. The S23 FE has a 4500 mAh battery no matter the variant, but the battery life is different because of the chipset's power efficiency. The Snapdragon model earned an active use score of 9 hours and 45 minutes, versus 8 hours and 28 minutes on the Exynos version. The two models were about the same when it comes to web browsing and social media apps, but the Snapdragon version edged ahead by around 20% in every other scenario. The 25 watt charging is the same on either variant. They're able to charge from 0 to 58% in half an hour, and a full charge takes 84 minutes. Both support wireless charging and reverse wireless charging too. Moving on to the cameras. The setup is the same on both phones. There's a 50 megapixel main cam, an 8 megapixel 3x telephoto, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide cam. Like I mentioned, the processing from the different chipsets ISPs could make a difference, so let's dive into it. The main cameras of both of these phones save detailed photos with lively colors and wide dynamic range. The ones from the Snapdragon version are a bit sharper, which does not necessarily mean more detailed, but they do look a little better from up close. Most importantly though, they are cleaner of noise. The photos from the telephoto cameras are solid. The Snapdragon versions are again clean of noise, while those coming from the Exynos version have gentler noise reduction and look somewhat more detailed. The difference is minor though. On the ultra-wide photos, the ones coming from the Snapdragon model are obviously sharper, while the ones from the Exynos version are softer, yet more organic. Both Galaxy S23 FE models produce some nice shots after dark. The photos from the main cameras are almost identical, except for the slightly higher noise from the Exynos device. For the telephoto cameras, the Snapdragon version again saves the less noisy and more detailed images. And finally, the photos coming out of the ultra-wide are more or less identical, with no clear winner. When it comes to video capture, the main cam's 4K videos are slightly better from the Exynos version of the phone. They have better detail rendition when looking from up close. The same can be said for the ultra-wide videos. As for the telephoto camera, it's the other way around. The Snapdragon one has the more detailed and sharper footage, while the Exynos model saves a noise-free but washed-out clip. In low light, videos are generally better when captured on the Exynos powered S23 FE. They're clean of noise and with more visible and organic detail. Now we have the selfies. The Snapdragon model saves sharper selfies with more prominent facial features, while the Exynos ones have a more balanced look. And here are the 4K selfie videos from both versions of the S23 FE. So there you go. Some people might have expected the Exynos variant of the S23 FE to fall short of the Snapdragon one, but the differences are quite small. We found the Snapdragon based S23 FE to have longer battery life and a bit faster GPU, and the photos come out a bit better, sharper and less noisy in most use cases. Surprisingly, the Exynos S23 FE has a couple of advantages of its own. It has slightly better video quality and its photos are less sharpened, which works out well when shooting with a selfie cam. You wouldn't need to choose between these two variants at a store, but it is nice to know the differences if you're ordering online, or just for your own curiosity. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.